Right, now this will tell us. And that's pretty conclusive. Still going. Close. Oh, I think he's got it down. How strong is he? Welcome back to the Pick and Go podcast, your one-stop shop for all things Super Rugby. And uh, once again, I'm joined in studio by uh, Pity Weepu. Pity, um, what'd you get up to over the week? Not a lot, uh, Paulie. Yeah, just a bit of uh, coaching and uh, managing. I coach through 15 and then manage my son's um, golf team. So, yeah, not not nothing too exciting apart from not uh, wanting to play golf with him, even what? though... It was juniors. <laughs> was there success uh, on the footy field or the golf course? Success, yes, in terms of um, selection processes that we're trying. We're not. We're not too worried about um, winning games at the moment because it's still trials for us. So we don't worry too much about uh, the score line. Just making sure that we get a look at everyone and everyone puts their best foot forward to give us a bit of a headache as selectors. And the golf. Yeah. Had to bite my tongue a few times. Well, with the Masters on this weekend, um, (laughs) how how do you think you'd go as a caddy for one of the pros? I think I'd be all right in terms of, like, uh, understanding what club to use and things like that, but the rest is up to him. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And, of course, we're always joined uh, from our... But our friend up north and the big smoke, um, Ben Seal of Surly Talk Sports. Uh, ben, welcome in. Uh, what was your weekend like? Uh, yeah, pretty successful. We had our uh, first comp game for the Mighty Coat. Boys got the dub. And then uh, we had a big wine and cheese night, which, uh, as you can imagine, it sounds sophisticated. But when you get 30 plus lads together, fresh off a win and some bottles of wine, it's far from sophisticated. It was a uh, some pretty raucous scenes there, but but good team bonding, and yeah, hopefully the lads can back it up this weekend. And do you ever have a wine and cheese uh, evening <laughs> after a game of uh, footy pity? Maybe when I was in France, not so much here. <laughs> 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 and it's usually before games too. <laughs> <laughs> they know how to do it in France. Oh, pre-match, you're like, uh, so where's the eggs, the sp- spaghetti the bloody chicken uh, no we've got uh cheese bloody salami and uh baguettes i'm like hey that's <laughs> <laughs> not what i missed you back home <laughs> where's the pork yeah hard. oh okay let's get on to uh, our topic for this week uh and i'll go to you first surly uh which team has surprised you the most so far this season and i guess you could look at the likes of the Crusaders, um, who sit just off the bottom of the table. But if you take into consideration the fact that they lost a big chunk of experience in the off-season, plus the injuries that they've had to start the season, probably not that surprising. But are they your surprise team, or have you found someone else? I've, I've tended to go more towards the positives. I think the biggest surprise for me is to see the Rebels in the fifth position after seven games this season. I didn't give them any chance. I think we've already touched a few times on how much of a shambles they are off the field, but on the field, they've actually been getting some pretty good results. So I had them as my biggest surprise. And then I also have the Blues, who are currently top of the ladder and just seem to be kind of the silent achievers of the New Zealand side so far. So much of the focus has been on the Canes and the Chiefs, but The Blues have quietly been going about their work. I saw a stat. They've only conceded two tries across the last 320 minutes. So two tries in four games. That's pretty strong defensively. So I think Ben Cotter and Cole would be pretty happy with how they're tracking as well and kind of letting those other teams take the headlines while they just go about their work. Pity. um, I can understand why Surly's gone with the Melbourne Rebels. I had a look at them myself, and I was surprised to see that they were – right up there in fifth place and had already picked up four wins this season. Um, It's, it's a big, big achievement, I guess, for a team where there's a whole lot of stuff going on off the field. Um, Would they be your surprise team of the season so far? Or have you found someone else? 
no, I was pretty much going to say uh, the Rebels as well, just because of we just touched on it, the debacle that's happening off the field. Clearly, the boys are players are trying to do everything possible not to focus on that and focus on uh, what they're supposed to be doing, which is play footy. Um, even though some of them probably don't want to be there um, and think, but the, I, I guess the beauty of it is they actually understand that um, I'm doing this purely for the love, and you're on top of it. On top of it, you get you usually get paid uh, to go with it. But I mean, it's just boys are going out there just to prove a point uh, week in week out, and to see them sitting there yeah, fifth is a huge. I didn't, I didn't I didn't even think I'd touch on them at the start start of the season either. And, I uh, think that they were going to be uh, that far into the uh, up the table um, going into week eight. I'd throw the Hurricanes in there as well. I, I, they're unbeaten, the only unbeaten team in Super Rugby uh, Pacific. Um, they look. I I thought they'd have a a good season, but to see them play the way they have without Ardi Savia, uh, and now we're really going to get a, a chance to see the sort of depth that they have. Uh, with Cam Roygaard out of the team as well with injury. Uh, but so far, uh, they played very, very well. Um, they've looked – they haven't really been overly tested, except for that game that went to uh, Golden Point, uh, was it, against the Reds is a few weeks ago now. But they sit there unbeaten, um, and they, they look – the way they're going about their business, they just look like a very, very sharp, well-organised team at the moment. and. Um, It'll take a very, very good performance from another team uh, to to knock them off. So, and as we know, you did say that they wouldn't pick up their first uh, loss until round 14. So they got a big, big test this weekend. We'll get to that a, a wee bit later. Um, but I think you could probably look at the the Melbourne Rebels are the big standouts uh, in terms of a, a surprise package. Uh, just the way that they have been able to shut out the noise that's been going on around them. It must be very, very tough. Um, and to put those four wins on the board, well done to those boys. Um, and they they picked up another win on the weekend. So let's have a look at a quick review of last weekend. And the round started with, boy, oh boy, um, the closest game for the weekend Um was a gap of 21 points. So I think that says a lot about what went on last weekend. I think uh, Surly, with his multi, wasn't too far away. Um, unfortunately, got tripped up uh, just slightly. Um, but he was going on oh, yeah, a whole lot of teams 13 and over, which was the right way to go in the end. And we have a look at the first game. Um, the Blues up against the Force. Well, there was only one team in it right from the off, Surly. Yeah, this is just another disappointing performance for the force, I guess. They're really struggling to put anything together this year. Their defense is all over the show. And I thought the Blues did really well. Obviously, a lot of changes. The injury list that they published when they named the team last Wednesday afternoon, they could have named another whole 15. They were really battling, and I'm sure they took the opportunity to rest a few guys with some niggles too, but... Blokes like Funaki, Corey Evans, they came in and looked like they deserved the starting jersey. They played outstanding. So I'm sure the Blues would have been happy with that result. 50 to 3, most pleasing part, like I touched on before. They're just not letting opposition sides score tries. And it's so easy when you're up by 50 points to just take the foot off the throat and uh, just, just allow an opposition to score. But they've clearly got high standards internally. And they're showing that they're a threat this year. Yep, pity they showed not just on the offensive side, but the defensive side as well, not to allow the force to cross the try line. And when games do get out to a big, big margin like that, they can lose their shape a wee bit. That didn't really happen with the Blues this time. They stuck to their guns, they had a game plan, and they executed it pretty much for the whole 80 minutes. Yeah, I, I guess I'll be pretty happy about uh, not just the result, but their performance. Um, but, I mean, we kind of talked about the force earlier on, that they were probably one of the teams that are, could be a bogey team for most most sides, and they just haven't shown up. I think Rebels have uh, overtaken them in terms of uh, that uh, style of, I mean, that opportunity. Uh, they've made the most of theirs. But, um, yeah, I, I don't think they fired a shot at all, the, the force. Uh, uh, you know, 
attack wise uh not much going and then defensively obviously you know most teams try and pride themselves with uh the defense but i don't think uh there was much defense uh or much tackles made from from their behalf and in, in terms of the stats i know they'll, they'll have to uh look uh, amongst themselves to figure things out in, individually as well as uh, through their systems and hopefully they can try and uh, get off the bottom uh, of the picking water or even try and get a get a win uh, this season. Right, so early second game of round seven and it was a short round with a number of teams on the bye. Uh, the Rebels uh, 41-20 over the Drua. The, the scoreline really doesn't tell the story of how the game unfolded. The Drew actually got out to a bit of a lead and would, would have been disappointed that they let that try in right on half time. They, they would have had a 12 point lead, I believe, if that try, uh, if they'd been able to hold the Rebels out. And they may have built a wee bit of momentum. But in the end, a yellow card, a red card, um, and that just, I, I guess. They struggled to hold on in the end. We know they're a lot better at home. Um, but they started the game very, very well, and they would have been disappointed with the way things turned out in the end. Yeah, I was on that plus 12 and a half, which was that multi-leg that let me down, but up 20 points to eight. I was thinking, you beauty, I should have backed them in to, to pull off a 13-plus win here, and I think their coach summed it up perfectly. It was just a bit of a meltdown in the second half, wasn't it? Two red cards, both kind of for foul play as well. They lost the plot a little there once the Rebels started to wrestle back momentum. So hopefully plenty of learnings there for the draw because like you touched on, they're so good at home. But in order to be a true contender in this competition, they're going to have to start putting sides like this away, away from home. And to blow a lead like that, it was such a prime opportunity for them to go over there and beat a decent Rebels side. I think they'll be stinging a little from this one. So I think they get the bye this week. It probably comes at the perfect time. They can kind of reflect on that, re-energize, and then look to take on the Canes at home the week after, which is another massive task. But disappointing for the Rebels. I think all three of us would agree that they're probably our second or third favorite team. We love watching them play, but you got the feeling that they let themselves down a little in that clash. Pity the Drua, who... Um upset you uh, punting wise last weekend uh, you had them in your multi i think and you also had them just as a single and they look very as we said they look very very good um almost through that first half but in the end discipline um just got to them and uh, that just the rebels took advantage uh when they had the extra man or extra i don't know if they had the extra two men on the field at some stuff uh, at any stage during the match but it was just too much for the Drew. I think uh, discipline's been probably one of their biggest ones week in, week out. Uh, they've been carded, I'd probably say, almost every round. Uh, you know, and it's difficult for them to maintain continuity when you've uh, got a few guys sitting on the sideline having a, having a break. Uh, and that can be when most teams capitalise on that. And so yeah, for, the, <clears throat> for them to be so ill-disciplined on the weekend... Um, not only that, I guess there was a, they may have he heard a few things as well. That probably reason why they got stuck into, uh, some of the players like that. But, um, yeah, I think they would have, the word, uh, word has, word has, has, no, um, rebels, uh, rebels done exactly what they needed to, to get under their skin. Um, cause if they didn't, I think they probably would have, the juror would have, uh, finished the job, uh, if they maintained discipline. Next game uh, on Saturday last weekend, and it was pretty much one-way traffic once again. The Chiefs 68, Moana Pacifica 12. At, at times, it, it looked like Moana had a very flat defensive line because th there are a number of tries that the Chiefs scored where they had only had to bust through that first line, and there was nothing in behind. Um, it was a very interesting strategy um, from Moana, but the Chiefs were just too big, too strong, and too fast in the end, Sally. Yeah, I think we mentioned last week that they'd conceded over 100 points in their last two games. Well, you can make that 170 now in their last three. So things are starting to really become tough for Moana now. They're probably showing that they don't quite have the depth that the other teams do in this competition. And when coming up against these top-caliber sides like the Chiefs, 
they're just getting exposed. There was another clinic from Damian McKenzie. Great to see he didn't miss a beat despite his week off. Just if he was there in that Crusaders game, it could have looked a little different. I thought Etienne Nano Satoru continues to put his hand up as well to all black selectors. He's been really sharp for the last couple of years now, but he's kind of a forgotten name that doesn't get touched on as much in that Chiefs back line just because they've got so many attacking weapons. But he looked great in the 15 jersey. He's a world-class winger as well. So he's another that Razor might be looking at. And then it was cool to see Imani Narawa really hit his straps Coming back from that injury, scored a hat trick. I think it was the Chiefs' biggest ever win margin in a Super Rugby game as well. So plenty of positives for them and a, and a good confidence boost off the back of that Crusaders loss heading into the Canes this weekend. Wana Pacifica, can they, can they pick things back up again this season? Pity, as early mentioned, the last three games, they've been very, very poor. and. You can usually tell when a team is struggling, not from their ability to score points, but their ability to stop points being scored against them. And they just have no answers at the moment in terms of defence. I don't think it's just defence. I think attack as well. I mean, they, they show glimpses of it on, on attack, um, but it's just not consistent for, for 80 minutes. Defence... Defence is definitely one of the areas that they need to work on uh, and get their structures right. I don't know whether that's down to the structure or that it's just individual error. Majority of the time it's individual error. Um, but, I mean, it's hard to uh, defend a team that is, like, on fire uh, and, you know, they've got uh, firepower pretty much from 1 to 15. And how do you contain... Uh, 15 players that are um, running into a playing system that's uh, working in their favour. So um, it's not just the backs that have been doing really well. The forwards have been working their asses off so that those boys can, uh, I, I guess, uh, reap the rewards. Um, but yeah, I don't think, did Narawa um, ever break out of uh, to 100% in his stride? It looked like he was just cruising. <laughs> But that's Quite that Fiji and winger, eh? They never look like they're running anyway. But... And then you just see them run some next to someone that's sprinting full full t- and You're like, was he really running? <laughs> yeah. That fast? He looks like he's just cruising. So, I mean, it's a it's a huge uh, opportunity for him to finally uh, get back into some form. And you know, like Surly said, I've been enjoying. Um, uh, Centennial on uh, at oh I see I liked him on the weekend anyway at, at fullback. He gave also uh, another kicking option uh, with his left foot um, to back up with uh, D Mac. So you know it's 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 a good headache to have actually uh, having um, selection processes where you've got a back three that's on fire. You um, and so who do you pick next to to throw into the uh, gauntlet this weekend? Okay, I like that sort of description you just had there where he was, looked like he was just jogging, but he's going past everyone. Where, where, if I think back, you, I mean me, um, it looked like I was running as fast as I could, but the front row were going past me. So. <laughs> <laughs> not uh, built last for game, speed, Paulie. Not built for no, speed. That's all right, mate. No, definitely not. Uh, last game. It was an Australian derby. Brumbies taking on the Tars. Brumbies 40, Tars 16. And I had a look at the Brumbies. They're in third place. They're on the same amount of points as the Blues and the Hurricanes. They have just been bubbling along, sort of quietly really, not really doing anything spectacular. But once again, and, and this has been a... I guess a characteristic of Brumby's teams for years and years. Now their set piece play is superb and they set up some very, very nice tries off set pieces. They they obviously practice very, very well and they take that into a game and then execute and they execute at the highest level. And they did that against the Waratahs. A couple of those tries just looked absolutely like knife and hot knife through butter. And Surly, you've been impressed by the Brumbies? Yeah, they're one of those silent achievers as well, where they just, every year, I think we touched on it last week, they're just locked into the top four. No one really takes them as that 
kind of team that could win the competition, but they're always in the semi-finals. The hardest thing for them over the past few years has been that they've had to make the trip over to New Zealand in that semi-final, and that's where they've kind of had their undoing. So if they could lock in a top two spot and make a team go over to Canberra, then that becomes a whole different kettle of fish. So they need to finish in the top two for me to be a genuine threat. They're just one of those sides that every year they're always locked in, ready to play finals footy. Their game translates so well to that style as well. And I've been loving their loose forward trio. That young number eight, I think his name's Kale. Jeez, he's got the skill set. I can't wait to see what Joe Schmidt and the likes of those guys can do with him in the Wallabies environment because he's a young lad. He's got pace. He's got great ball skills. He's not afraid of the confrontation as well. And with the, alongside Hooper and Valentini, they've looked the real deal. So, yeah, I wouldn't underestimate the Brumbies, especially at home. But I think in order to be a genuine title chance, they need to finish in the top two to get that home semi. But he brings up a good point, the young number eight, Kyle. And he scored a good try in the corner as well. Um, so he's got some very, very good skills, but not afraid to get stuck in amongst it either. So things are looking up for the Wallabies ahead of the uh, Test Series, the Rugby Championship uh, season, which isn't too far away. Um, but the Brumbies, have they impressed you? Yeah, I think they've always been one of the franchises over in Australia that's always been uh, there or thereabouts in terms of uh, they're definitely on top uh, over on that side of the ditch um, and they're a team that you've got to keep an eye on. Um, but as Surly said, you know, once they sort of venture o- away from home, uh, they actually struggle a little bit. Um, but majority, no one really, like I said the other week, no one really wants to go to Canberra. <laughs> even though it's the capital, but during uh, when it starts getting a bit colder there, it's like it's really bad. And so I've I've seen a few league games where they're bloody uh, playing league in snow, and I'm like, um, <laughs> no, thank you. I've never had that luxury of uh, playing in snow, but I mean, I know it's cold down there. I don't know it was that cold, <laughs> but it's uh, it's definitely a place that no one really wants to venture to uh, in terms of footy, uh, just because it seems like a not an exciting town to go to, hang out in, to be honest. I didn't like it when I went there. It was boring. <laughs> <laughs> if you could get, compare Canberra to a town in New Zealand, what town would the what town would it be? Oh, I was going to say Invercargill, but not, <laughs> not quite Invercargill. <laughs> maybe, maybe somewhere like um, Twizel, who that in the peak time they actually a lot of people go to but when it gets a bit colder no one wants to be there <laughs> shout out to Invercargill and Twizel <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can't wait for the comments listen. there send yeah. all your frustrations directly to Pity <laughs> oh didn't you come down here for fishing I did and it was great <laughs> <laughs> oh so it's okay to go when it's warm I was down there when it was actually just getting to uh, winter and it was pretty cold I'm not going to lie. We were fishing right next to a mountain too, and I'm like, oh, yep. <laughs> I don't think the right gear. Should have a, brought a few more thermals. <laughs> well, I guess that, I guess teams can, well, the Brumbies can factor that in, that most teams, if not all teams, hate going to Canberra to take them on, first of all, because of the weather, uh, um, and second of all, because, as you say, I've never been. It's a boring place. So just like the Drua, their hometown support is very, very good, plus the humidity or sometimes the rain all plays in their favour. So I guess we shouldn't be surprised that the Brumbies have a very, very good record uh, at home in Canberra, especially when it's snowing. Right, let's look ahead to this week. It's round eight. It's another short week again, just four games with a number of teams on the bye. We kick it off with Moana Pacifica up against the Reds. Uh, The bookies have Moana Pacifica uh, Pacifica at $4.60. The Reds are at $1.18. The draws at $21. Moana Pacifica are 14 and a half point underdogs. And the game total is set at 62 and a half. Now there's a bit of weather coming our way. I know there's already a bit of weather on the West Coast down South at the moment, um, but this could have an effect on this game possibly uh surly yeah that that points total is big isn't it and i guess anytime you see 
Moana in a contest, 175 points they've conceded in their last three. So you wouldn't be stupid to chuck the overs in there, but you do have to factor in the rain. Now, this game's been played in Whangarei, I believe. So hopefully the locals get out and support this Moana team and, and maybe a little change of scenery might help Moana as well. The Reds come in fresh off the back of a bye. So they'll be looking forward to this contest. I think Moana get the bye next week. So that might be some motivation for them to leave everything out on the paddock. I think if the Reds play their game that we've seen them play lately, they lost to the Brumbies by a point two weeks ago, then I think they'll be too strong because they like to throw it around and play some exciting footy as well. But Moana still on their day. There's just something about them in my heart that says that if they're up for it, if they bring that physicality that they can do defensively and on attack and really look to bash the Reds and take them on up front, and they could be in with a chance, but I think the smart money is just to go on the heavy favourites here and back in the Reds. Pity the Reds coming in off the bye, so they're nice, uh, well rested. Um, they've had plenty of time to prepare for this. The Wana Pacifica have been just beaten the last three games. Just beaten? Well, when I, I mean, when I say just beaten, I mean just beaten all over the park. <laughs> Can you make a case for Moana Pacifica? There would have to be a huge turnaround in form for them, not not just to win, but to keep it within that 14 and a half point uh, point start that the bookies have uh, got. Uh, I, like I said, I said, my heart's saying I'll pick them uh, every day of the week. But in terms of form, um, definitely one area that they, they need to be, uh, you know, addressing is definitely their, their, their defence. Um, conceding too many points uh, so it's probably maybe it's an area that they've been trying to work they'll try and work on this week uh, to hopefully uh, give them a break uh, before they go to the break it could be something that might motivate them to try and keep the score line a lot closer than it should be um, and then on top of that try and be more excited on on attack so that they can um, exploit some of the the traits of the of the of the reds or their weaknesses so um Gonna say I'm gonna have to go with the Reds uh, if I was to bet uh, using my tips, but um, yeah, like Izzy said the other week, my heart saying Moana, but my head saying don't be stupid with the Reds. So that means Moana's gonna win because Izzy nailed that with his heart and head. So there you go, get on Moana at four dollars bloody sixty. Happy days. The way I've been tipping over the last month, the one are probably hoping that I tip the Reds out this weekend because that'll go a huge way to helping them in their uh, endeavours to pick up a win. Second game of the round for round eight, we travel to Allianz Stadium where the Waratahs host the Crusaders. Tars three dollars and seventy cents. Crusaders a dollar thirty. The draws at twenty one dollars. Tars are 10 and a half point underdogs at home, and the game total is set at 55 and a half. Surly, do the Crusaders start to build a wee bit of momentum this weekend? You'd like to think so. I, yeah, I wouldn't have picked that these two teams would be 10th and 11th at this stage of the season because historically they have a great rivalry, don't they? But yeah, both teams have been battling. Crusaders, though, fresh off the back of that win. They got the bye. They welcome back Blackadder, Fergus Burke, Brody McAllister. So we're told. Maybe a couple other possibilities in there. I think Tamaiti Williams and Scott Barrett are still a couple weeks away, but they're inching to coming back as well. David Harvilly. So... I think they would have really circled this period as the chance to pick up some wins. They're taking on some Australian sides. They need to kind of get to that three, oh, that four to five win mark to cement themselves into the top eight. They lost to this team in uh, that super round earlier in the year, so they'll be stinging from that. The chance for redemption. I think Fergus Burke alone is going to make a massive difference just as their game driver running the cutter for them. So I'll be backing the Crusaders to get the job here against the Tars team that I think will be really disappointed with their performances over the last month or so. Pity the Crusaders. Uh, teams haven't been named officially yet, but it does look like they will be getting a few players back for this matchup. And I think Fergus Burke is the big, big talking point in terms of that. Can he... I guess give them give the Crusaders a, a bit of a consistency around that number ten jersey. 
Yeah, it depends on uh, how much game time they've given him leading up to uh, selection, whether they've done that right or whether they just chuck him in the deep end and hope that uh, the fitness uh, levels will be good and uh, that he's conditioned enough to uh, direct the team at the same time. But um, it, it's a huge factor in terms of um, him running the cutter um, and obviously uh, played really well in, in the NPC competition last year. Um but it's just having the, the likes of um, some of the injured players coming back can actually boost the boys' um, spirits. And hopefully this is uh, their chance to start moving forward. And um, you never know, they might start collecting these wins that we were talking about earlier on that uh, once they get their, their opportunities and they sniff sniff blood, they'll, they'll definitely be capitalising on it. So I'm, I was actually picking the Crusaders to to win this one nice well and i can tell you that most of the early money has been on the crusaders uh to but uh, to beat the waratahs and i think we'll probably see quite a bit more come for the crusaders after the teams are named if indeed we do see the likes of blackadder um fergus burke name to uh, either start or come in off the bench match of the round coming up now uh, saturday night here at the the tinny house the Canes taking on the Chiefs. <laughs> you just say the tinny house. <laughs> well, what's it made of? Tin. I wouldn't call it the tinny house. <laughs> is, it, is that why they've been playing so well, Paulie? Hey, eh? the, <laughs> the boys are feeling free, nice and relaxed. <laughs> Dropping the ball. Bookies <laughs> uh, have got the the unbeaten Hurricanes at home as outsiders. They're $2.15. The Chiefs are $1.72. The draw's at $16. Canes are one-and-a-half point dogs. The game total set at 53 and a half. I can tell you that the punters are trying to tell the bookies they've got this one wrong because there's been plenty of early money on the Hurricanes at $2.15. I tend to agree with them as well. I know that Cam Roygaard is a huge, huge loss for the Canes. Hold on, they've got ex All Black TJ Pedernada there, possibly soon to be All Black again. We don't, um, he's certainly a, he's in the conversation. Surly, should the Canes be favourites at home against the Chiefs? I was surprised, and like you touched on just there, the only reason I could think they wouldn't be is due to the loss of Roygaard. But does he move the market? that much does he make that much of a difference I was pretty shocked like he's been one of the form players of the competition so far this year but to swing it that much based off a halfback being out when TJ comes straight in and he's already shown this year that he's looking every bit the real deal so yeah I was surprised and I'm sure that the Hurricanes team it probably has been thrown around a little in, in in the lead up to this one that they come in as the underdogs it's Pretty surprising. The Chiefs looked pretty sharp last week, of course, and they do have a point to prove because off the back of dropping that game against the Crusaders, you could say that they haven't been able to beat the best teams in the competition this year. So this is a massive test for them, and they'll be up for it. They'll be stinging it and looking to pull off a big win. But, yeah, momentum is a crazy thing. So is confidence. The fact the Canes are at home as well. I, I was shocked for this. I was positively pleased, though, because it means you can bring in some of those alternative starts there and in favour of the home side and get some good money. I think the Canes plus seven and a half is a dollar fifty almost, so I'll be jumping on that. Pity you sign in with the bookies here and the fact that they've made the Chiefs favourites nope. <laughs> down here in Wellington on Saturday night, or you... You've got all the inside oil, of course, with the uh, Hurricanes, <laughs> and what you're about to share with us. Um, Canes, outsiders at home. Yeah, I don't know what's going on there. I mean, maybe because they've obviously watched the Chiefs play on the weekend. Canes have had um, had a bye. Um, so I guess they're just going off momentum uh, in terms of what's happened over the weekend. But to pick the Chiefs... Uh, as favourites over the team that hasn't lost a game yet, and I've tipped them not to lose a game until round 14. So I've almost uh, come through with my uh, quarter or around the Crusaders winning first before the the Canes lose a game. Um, but I, I think 
it doesn't matter so much in terms of the Cam Warrior guard uh, coming out. Um, you know, you've got the experience of uh, TJ Perenara, uh Richard Judd, who's uh, also uh, a veteran of the game, uh, and whether they decide to go with uh, two experienced players or you throw in the young fella of, of the young fella. Uh, was it Villian? Yeah, Villian, whose father was a Hurricane as well. So, you know, whether you try and spruce things up with a bit of, um, I, I guess, out, not outlib, uh, ad lib uh, rugby, but just expecting something unexpected from uh, someone that's fresh and keen to have a crack because, you know, being so young, you just want to give everything a crack. And um, so they've they've definitely got to make a decision around the nine department. But, I mean, that loose forward trio um, have been outstanding and watch the Chiefs on the weekend and their loose forward trio is coming along, humming pretty well. So it's going to be a good um, battle uh, for every position. Uh, I think there's threats across the board no matter what team they put on on the pitch um for both teams so it's going to be a good matchup but i'm picking the canes to to win this one once again it's a game that will probably be affected by the weather uh, saturday night uh, with a bit of rain probably a bit of wind as well um, and that can be i guess a wee bit um, challenging for visiting players who haven't experienced that sort of um, swirling wind that they can get sometimes at the uh What'd you call it? Oh, the cake then. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. No more tinny house. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last game of the round, and it's the uh, Rebels. Yeah, the high-flying Rebels, the surprise package of the tournament so far. The Rebels at Amy Park hosting the Highlanders. The Rebels, they're two dollars and forty-five. Highlanders a dollar sixty. The draws at sixteen. Rebels are four and a half point dogs at home, and the game total set at fifty-eight and a half. Highlanders um, coming off the bye, so they'll be uh, fairly fresh. And the Rebels coming off a very good comeback win against the Drua. So who have you got here, Surly? Yeah, this is a tough one because Rebels at home again. I thought they would be the favourites heading into this one. I think there'll be some sore bodies there whenever you play the Fiji and draw the week after. No doubt there's a few sore rigs because they're a physical football side. But sitting in fifth on the ladder at home in Melbourne, taking on the eighth-ranked side and you're the underdog, I think they'll be using that as motivation as well. This is one where the heart says to to back the landers, but the head says, wait a minute here, Surly, because the Rebels at home, 1-12, to 12, playing pretty juicy, could be a good option. I, I hope the landers get this one because it's a game they kind of need to win to really cement themselves in for that playoff run, and you don't want to be finishing an eighth or else you're going to take on the likes of the Canes or the Chiefs, which pretty much sets you up for a first-round exit. So they need to be in, in that sixth or so position, and this is a game they need to win in order to do that. So I'll be backing the Landers, but I think there could be some smart money around the Rebels or at least those alternative lines that I keep referring to for the home side just to make the most of that home ground advantage. Pity the Hollanders, you with the men from down south or... Have you been impressed enough by the Rebels to back the home team this Saturday night? I think I'm just going to go and pick and stick with the Landers, only because I I always want any New Zealand team to beat the Australian team. <laughs> <laughs> Don't like losing to those guys because some of my mates uh, over there one played for the bloody uh, crew, I mean the brumbies and every time they beat up beat the bloody any kiwi uh franchise is like oh what happened so yeah. um i'll stick to bloody uh the landers winning this week um like Sally said it's something it's a, it's a spot that they need to um climb where they need to climb up the ladder uh, and hopefully uh this is their week to to pull it all together um but yeah i'm gonna go with the landers this week right Time for us to spend a bit of money. But before we do that, let's look back to last week. And it's going to be a very quick uh, review of how our punting went last week because we all lost. <laughs> Not one single collect uh, between us. It was a Damn very, it. very poor week. <laughs> bonus bets, low poorly. Bonus bets. Come on. <laughs> we'll have a look. Uh, pity first. Um, had the Blues 13 and over. Uh, the Drua 1 to 12. 
which was looking pretty good. Uh, Chiefs head to head and Brumbies one to twelve. So not even a bonus bet there, I don't think, unfortunately for Pity. And then he had just a draw head to head. Um, so loss and a loss. Surly went with Surly went with the one, just the one multi, mm. and uh, he took the Chiefs, Brumbies, and Blues all thirteen and over. Oh, we're looking very good now. Uh, into the Drua plus twelve and a half. Well, he he must have been thinking, this is it. This is in the bag. That was paying four thirty five hundred dollars on, and then the Drua just fall in a heap. Ill discipline cost him in the second half, and. Surly's multi goes out the back door, but he would have got a bonus bet uh, back uh, because he only won a successful league there, but still no collect. And uh, my easy two-leg multi uh, was not so easy in the end, and uh, that went uh, down in a screaming heap. So overall, I'm at the bottom of the pack, minus 587.50. And we've just found out that's not the... The broke zone. I, I'm still here. So <laughs> I'm going to try and make it back. Not to cut your losses uh, zone yet. Bankrupt. Uh, Sealy, he's now <laughs> 87.50 up for the season. And Pity is 543.20. Even with that $100 loss last week, Eesh. he's 543.20 up for the season. So way ahead in terms of um, how we get ways. <laughs> He's light years ahead of me, and he's and he's the length of the straight ahead of Surly. So I think I'm the the positive of what yours is from the negative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we balance each other out. <laughs> um, right, let's have a look to this week then, and we've got a hundred dollars to spend once again, and we'll go to Surly first and see if he can come up with his little. I get the feeling we're going to have an alternate point start multi somewhere in the making here. <laughs> I've I've actually tried um I've gone big with one multi and then one to hopefully uh hedge the bets on a couple upsets. So I've just gone with the Highlanders head to head. I've gone the Canes plus seven and a half. I've gone the Crusaders and then the Reds head to head as well. I got ninety bucks on that. That's paying three dollars sixty. I don't want to jinx it, but that's my version of the uh, Paulie's safe multi. And then just with the ten dollars, I've gone with a little flutter here, and that's Rebels one to twelve and Moana one to twelve, just in case two sides get up there at home. That's paying twenty two dollars and twenty cents. Uh, Pity you're. Right at the front of the pack at the moment. Yeah. So hunters are waiting patiently for you to espouse your wisdom for this weekend. <laughs> Going to branch out and go a four legger. Say there's thirteen uh, and over or thirteen plus. Canes twelve and under. Landers twelve and under, and the Reds thirteen plus for seventy five dollars. And I'm going to put $25 on Yossi to score a try. Braden Yossi? I don't even know if he's in the starting lineup yet. <laughs> I'm just guessing. He's, <laughs> he's getting that confident. He's getting that oh, confident. That he's picking players that could be off the bench to score. Exactly. At least he's got that That's inside. Right well, I'll try, not the first try. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Well, they do have a, a very, good, very good mix of loose forwards to pick from. The Canes, but you'd think that for a big game like this, that Braden Yossi would be in there somewhere. Of course, they got Peter Larkoy. Um, who's the guy that just came back from England? Uh, Brad. Brad Shields, the Shields. Devin Flanders. It's pretty stacked, Landers, but Yossi's been unreal. Carifi. Duplessy, Karifi. It's there. There's, there's a few options there for um, the Hurricanes to go with. Right. I'm going with a two league multi here. Oh, no. I'm going to go Hurricanes, match result, $2.15, into Crusaders, 13 and over, comes out at $4.30. I'm going to put a hundy on. I'm coming back, guys. I'm very, very confident this week. I can feel the money almost jingling in my pockets as we speak. So look out. Crusaders, 13 and over, Hurricanes in the match result market. I'll tell you what, Chiefs fans things. will be happy to hear that, Paul. Yeah, they be will be very... There'll be a party in Hamilton. They'll be very... Oh, good, because I'm going to be up at Cambridge on Friday at the <laughs> United Champions Cambridge Raceway for the Race by Grins. 
and the uh, TAB trot. Um, so I'm sure there will be a big, big crowd at Cambridge, a big Waikato crowd there. Look forward to it. Take Is Beaver going to be there? Beaver's pouring some drinks, I hear. <laughs> Isn't he a Hurricanes fan now, though? Weren't you saying? So I wonder who's he's supporting on Saturday. Yeah, I look. I, I look think forward to having too. Yeah. Look forward to having a chat. <laughs> He'll probably tell us who he's supporting after the game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, also, of course, uh, the our tipping comp continues on. Uh, I had a look. I, I've made a, a wee bit of progress last week. Um, and I'm inside the top 100 now, 90 seconds. So I did make a, and I think I may have forgot to put my pick in. Oh, no, no. I got my picks in on time this <laughs> time. time. Um, Shirley, did you make a wee bit of progress in terms of the uh, tipping comp for Super Rugby? Yeah, I shot up about 20 spots. I'm into, I think, 77th or 78th. Now I've decided what account I'm going to use going forward. I've deleted the other one, so that should uh, <laughs> help as well because it means I'm not uh, wasting all my tips across the two separate accounts. So, yeah, fingers crossed. I'd like to get top 50 at least before the season ends just to have a bit of respectability, you know. But are you uh, up or down? I'm actually down. Oh, yeah. I've gone from uh, the top 50 to the top 60. I was in about 30 something this week. I might be in 50. Oh, Pauza, 56. There you go. 56. I oh. think it was the second game they got me, the Jura. It was the one they got me. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I did go close to picking the score line on those ones, but. <laughs> Everyone just didn't want to play their part and keep it within my uh, <laughs> my numbers. Congra it. Congratulations to JC Flame on who had the best round uh, for for last week, and also congratulations to Dan Twenty Eight who is the top of the table at the moment. Oh. Dan Twenty Eight who's currently on thirty six and a half points, and don't forget we've got some bonus bets to give away at the end of the season. So keep plugging away. There's not a lot between uh, first and tenth at the moment. I think tenth is currently on 31. Dan 28, who's at the top, is on 36 and a half. So only five and a half points separating first and tenth at the moment in our uh, Super Brew tipping comp um, for the TAB. So yeah, most of you guys are doing a lot better than us. Um, so I'm still going to keep trying, even though I can't win any bonus bets and. But he can't win any either. Neither can Sue. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh, keep, keep... look out! What happens if, if we make the top ten? Does it is it just the top two that get bonus bets and stuff, or is it uh, first, second, and third? I believe we'll get um, some bonus bets at the end of the regular season. Oh, so, right. yep, still plenty of water to go under the bridge uh, in terms of that. So you can make uh, plenty of points up. Gunning for you, Dan Twenty Eight. Dan Twenty Eight. Um, let's look at the promotions this week. Uh, we've got some same game claims on Super Rugby, same game claim on the Tars Crusaders game, the Hurricanes Chiefs and the Rebels Highlanders. So three matches this weekend that uh, apply to the same game claim. And of course, we've got the mega multi buster for the oval ball. Um, so you can multi up those four games if you want. You can throw in a bit of AFL or NRL if you like as well. Um, and the, that'll qualify you for the uh, overball mega multi buster. Right. This weekend, Pity, what are you up to? Uh, not a lot. Uh, coaching, coaching, more coaching. <laughs> and, uh, first 15? First 15. And then also my girls, uh, Ngahue Farm, the 14 girls team. Oh. They're going to do a bit of um, jiu jitsu. So I don't have to do too much. I just sit there and watch them. Um, get smoked or smoke each other <laughs> hopefully hopefully no one breaks a limb or arm bars each other <laughs> or tries to throw them on the ground and knock them out so yeah it'll be an interesting one i'm grateful that one of the parents is a black belt and was keen to put his hand up and uh see if we wanted a wanted the girls to do a session there oh good nice mm. so uh what are you up to uh got Got footy and then straight to Mount Smart for the, the Warriors Manly game, 5 p.m. on Saturday, Arvo. So looking forward to that. Oh, no. Oh. No wine and cheese evening uh, this Saturday then. Oh, well, actually might be at Mount Smart. Yeah. How was yeah. the uh, lungs after the first game, Cuff? 
yeah, it was tough. Had to had to get through the full eighty as well. So <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't easy. I dropped back to fullback a fair bit there just for a little rest. Um, I've got a saying: if in doubt, kick it out. So you know, you just walk to the line out, get get a chance to rest up. But yeah, it wasn't easy. Feel better for it though. And um, Sunday, Monday was tough. Sunday, obviously tough for the hangover. Monday was when the soreness of the body kicked in. So yeah, the old boys feeling it. Well, it's good fun. So who's uh, Takapuna got this weekend? Ooh, yuck. Northcote, mate. Takapuna, oh, no, no good. Was just, ah. Oh, was it? Takapuna, I don't remember him saying that. I think that's who he said he was playing against. <laughs> yeah, was mate, that's right? that's our biggest rivals, Paulie. Don't you bring <laughs> that up. That's like, that's like me saying to you, Paulie, mate, who, who have the Chiefs got this weekend? Oh, I can't wait to watch them. Oh, at the old tinny, you've been going to the tinny house too much to watch games, eh? That's oh, where it came from. No good, oh, mate. No. Oh, good luck to Northgate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cheers, Pauling. Cheers. That, that's a redemption, mate. Right. And good luck to you uh, punters out there, too. Uh, if you're going to have a bet, uh, do it responsibly. Um, and we'll be back again around the same time, same place next week as we review round eight and look ahead to round nine. Thanks to Surly and thanks to Pity for joining me. And thanks to you guys for listening. And we'll see you next week on the Pick and Go podcast.